there's been nothing like this market before. Uh, it's taking off for sure, but it's also a lot of curiosity. A lot of people want to learn and understand and know before they start spending. Try to find smarter people than yourself and then hire them and then yes. empower them and give them all the decision power they need to, to, to fly. Hi everyone and welcome back to a new episode of the World Class Leader Show. So today's episode we have um, Niklas Persson from Stockholm, Sweden. So Niklas is the CEO and co-founder of Ditster. And Ditster is, uh, so I mean the mission that, oh, of course Niklas will tell us a little bit more later, but you know, the the the, the mission of Ditster is accelerate transition, we're talking about energy in the energy space, to sustainable living by making climate action easy and fun through engaging technology. So I'm sure that most of you are curious to hear more about, about Niklas and his journey. So Niklas, thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you. Pleasure to be here, Andrea. Thank you, Niklas. So would you like maybe to add a few words about you, Niklas? So, I mean, you founded this there now, I guess seven years ago, right? Possible? Yeah, tell us a bit more your journey. So what were you doing before? And then what was, you know, the reason why you decided to start this there? And then we will go a little bit more into that. Yeah, by now it's it's been a long journey, uh, Andrea. I, I made some some changes in life, some some career moves. Uh, and then I like to think I had, well, three car- careers at least. Um, started out um, early on about to go to the university by coincidence ended up at the, the flight training school in the Swedish Air Force and started to fly fighter jets um, and did that for almost 12 years um, before I sort of came back on track and, and got myself a academic education and went into capital capital markets technology and the yeah. pretty much the financial industry and tech and spent well 17 years in that in that domain. But at some point during that period, started to look at environment, sustainability, and also probably a midlife thing. Um, what will be my legacy? Is there anything more I can do with uh, with uh, with more purpose? Um, financial industry being very intriguing, very exciting, very motivated people, rewarding in many ways, but still missing that um, really purpose, if you like, and, and long-term vision. So me and uh, a few colleagues, a couple of friends started to look at what we could do around climate change or about climate change, bringing to bear what we have um, of experience around tech platforms, of our building businesses, um, and well, founded Deedster in 2016, late 2016, and yeah, became operational in 2017, and here we are seven years later or six years later. Yeah. So, what was your, where did the, you know your interest for climate change start? Is it did it start when you were in you know in in financial services? So, so what triggered your interest about climate change? I mean, we most of us are interested in climate change, but what was? It sounds like, by the way, you had a kind of a breakthrough moment to say, okay, because you mentioned about legacy, I want to do something different. What was the thing that happened to you that triggered the idea of climate change and then doing something, you know, on your own? So is something specific, an episode, an event, or was just part of a long discovery process that, you know, immaterializing something just, you know, out of the blue, like in a haha moment? Yeah, that's a good question. It, I mean, I've always been very curious, so that is that is one thing. Uh, my curiosity, uh, but but if you if you're looking for a particular event, I I think back on a on a visit in the, in the Swedish not Alps. We have fjells. It's the the the, uh-huh. the mountains uh-huh. are not as high as the Alps, and together we're skiing with, there, right? They're gonna they, they ski there, right? And we they were in, uh, we were on a skiing trip. It was actually a, an avalanche training um, wow. with a, with a close friend of mine. Uh, and he was inviting me because uh, the week before I just resigned from from my executive position with 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 FIS um, because I was was a bit tired about the of the corporate life. I'm more of an entrepreneur. I started out a couple of firms before, 
So at that point, I, I, I need to do something new. And I was invited by, to this trip by my friend, uh, Daniel Derham, who had uh, for some time worked, well, pretty much redirected his company towards sustainability, sustainability advisory, and, and more specifically climate and climate research. And we started to think to talk about that. And, and me being curious before became even more curious. And I thought that, mm -hmm. well, this is a field that I could, I wish I could do something uh, because I didn't think that at the time. Uh, but that that really, that was the starting point. And that, that was the one year before we founded the firm, but it was actually the starting point of us coming together and together with a couple of other uh, old colleagues, four founders starting Deedster and yeah. That's nice. where the journey started. Yeah, yeah, you're, you know, I'm intrigued. Uh, you know, I'm curious too. So I, I want to know more about, and I think it's, look, uh, first of all, for two reasons. One is I've been in energy space most of my career. So to me, whoever that, you know, does something in energy space gets already my interest because that's that's where I, where I was for many years. And by the way, you, as many of our uh you know, our listeners, they know, you know, I'm, I'm very picky on selecting, you know, guests and people that either I know personally or they're recommending. There's someone in my network, Dorit Croman recommended you. Uh, she's a listener of the podcast. And so I think what, what you have is something interesting, you know, a story related to the purpose. So tell us a little bit more now about the purpose of this there. So why start it? What's the big future that you're creating because that's what I think most of the times participants and all the, um, listeners in our podcast are interested in, and interested into the future that you are creating, shaping. So tell us a bit more about the future that you have in mind for Deedster. Yeah, so so, so the mission for for Deedster is to to what we as we as we say it uh, to to enable the shift to a sustainable world. Um, more specifically, we are helping large corporates and, and banks to in in their net zero transformation, mm. and then that you know quickly becomes you know detailed and technical. But the but the, but the background of that is is the uh, the 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 urge for us to to make a difference in a in a very very important topic, and I I can almost think of no more important topic than than climate change and what is about to happen uh, with our world. And the more you get into that, the more you you read, uh, mm -hmm. the, 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 the more the more involved you get. It's it's impossible to turn to turn back. And that was that was the, the experience I had myself when I started to to discuss these matters and, and read up. I read the book uh, the the Naomi Klein book uh, this changes everything. I don't know if you read it. It's a, it's a fantastic no. book. No matter what, what kind of well, political view you have of things, that 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 is a comprehensive um, description of what what we're up against uh, in 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 the net zero transformation of of all sorts of you know obstacles, if you like. So so that that is that is intriguing. It, it, it is important, and uh, and it's something you can actually do something about. Um, because everything, every, every drop matters. Every every drop counts, if you like. Um, so that's what started us, and and with that view, with that vision of making a difference, large scale, by engaging people and organizations in this in this transformation, starting with bringing awareness of what is this topic about, how what mm -hmm. does it, how, how does it work, because. A lot of for a lot of people this is this is difficult um and, and to understand so so simplify it a bit but more important making you know working and and focusing on the upsides for individuals and and organization businesses because number two it's not only difficult for a lot of people it's boring it's it's bad news it's it's terrible you don't want to think about it you turn away um uh, whereas if you look at the opportunity in this for the individual, for for well, obviously at the end of the day for, for for the world, but 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 to start with for individuals, there are so much great things to find out about this, and that was that's been sort of the, the guiding principle for Deedster as we built the platform to make this exciting, intriguing, and rewarding for everyone involved. 
And that is my my conviction and strong belief that we will need we will need to to to, to leverage the, the the rewarding more specifically the commercial forces uh, in this turnaround because that is the only force strong enough to to make this happen as fast as 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 it requires, right? Yeah. So tell us a bit more about. And by the way, that that sounds profound and important and most you know most significantly i think really purpose driven which is all you know all the conversation is about now to be more specific what is support that you give to corporations to banks you said in terms of you know raising awareness about climate change tell us a bit more the details of that yeah um so the diesel platform is basically a platform with tools and data to measure explain and reduce carbon emissions um the the company it's a it's a b2b service but but we do focus on individuals to start with and then organizations and companies they now now use our our platform to essentially decarbonize their value chain by engaging their employees their suppliers and their customers in their net zero transformation journey if you like so today I think the, the 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 large corporates they are actually taking lead. I we can see governments catching up, but I have to say that some of the brave visionary companies of the world they are absolutely taking lead in the transition, um, being long term vested and and long term oriented. Uh, they implement strategies and plans to reduce emissions and net zero. And we've built a platform to support that journey for them, which is about engaging their individuals, uh, being employees, bringing awareness, education, and activation to workforce, but do the same with their customers. Hmm. And here's obviously certain segments more, more important and interesting than others. If you look at individuals and, and, and habits and, and consumption habits and, and what have you. Um, but but essentially um, helping large organizations, uh, banks and corporates in that in that transformation. So l- let me understand. So the platform, yeah. just to be specific, so the platform yeah. is a technology platform, so where employees can have access to, and once they are in the platform, what's going to happen? So there there is a, the educational content. There are ways for them to change as well their behavior in terms of carbon footprint. So what's the experience of employees once they engage in the platform? Yeah, for employees, um, it, it is it is programs to, first of all, understand the topic and then to educate themselves or, or be educated on, mm-hmm. on, on well, climate change. What is it about um, sustainability in a, in, a, in a larger context, also bringing uh, waste water into the to the equation um but but, but w- with focus on on carbon and carbon emissions and then t- to take action uh, as individuals and as professionals be it in their private life in between work and 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 and, and home but also in the workplace um and there you can have well, different flavors uh depending on what program you launch in in your in your corporation, um, some corporates they they do care about the individual and 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 how they how they engage on this topic. Also, sort of from a from a private standpoint, for a per- personal standpoint, where, while other companies focus a lot about where they are in their industry, um, how they the, the role their industry plays in the transformation they play in their industry, and to bring along. The workforce and their employees onto that journey, and uh, to 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 spur um, change, innovation, and and engagement on this super important topic. So that is that is how you that is how we typically work with with employees. So um, multi year programs, um, educational programs, but also powered by by gamification. So engaging people, make it exciting, make it rewarding to be part of these programs um and then doing the same with 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 customers so on bank platforms launching the same type of 
engaging tools um, to bank customers, but where you can actually use a range of data sources to produce this carbon carbon footprint. So using bank transactions, your, your spending transactions, using digital receipts, market data, et cetera, to, to build and, and, and well, publish a, a, a dynamic carbon footprint for you as an individual that really moves uh, in relation to how you how you spend. And, and, and that is sort of a, an extension of the service um, um, directed towards large platforms where you have a lot of people, typically bank platforms, e-commerce platforms, retail platforms. Yeah, I understand. So, look, I'm I'm interesting to one thing. So, climate change. Uh, I mean, the the word the words that you use and we use. I mean, they're really telling us something, right? So, it's an element of behavioral changes. Because climate change is changing the way how we behave in relation to the to the to the environment, essentially. So, how do you see people changing or not changing behaviors about around this? So, in other words your educational program, the program that you have for employees, but also for the corporations. So, and I'm sure that you have developed, and gamification is a great example, how you to develop, you know, a fun way to mobilize people, you know, by engaging in something fun that could be actually really useful to shape different sort of behaviors. How do you see the response of people? Because when, whenever, you know, I, I'm a big, you know, the, the work I do is primarily in shifting mindset. So once you change mindset, then you can really change behavior. So I think your work to some extent is very similar, right? Because you're trying to shift in mindset for changing the behaviors around climate. So the climate. So how do you see the response for clients, for employees in making change in the way how they behave? Because that's by by the way, that is yeah. a key question, right? For the for the larger transformation, yeah. Yeah. you know, in the world about climate change. Um, the, the response is great, and that's the great thing with the, with this platform and the apps um, and the services we launched. That the 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 response is 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 so great because uh, obviously it's it's a good cause, uh, but it's also there is an urgency, there is a curiosity, there is an urgency among people to understand what they can do. And the, the the fact that it's it's a bit easier than they thought of in the beginning, and uh, the sensation, the um, uh, the experience that I, I it matters what I do. I mean, we we make these hundreds and hundreds of unconscious decisions every day from we wake up in the morning until we go to bed. Where if we're just a little bit more conscious and a little bit more informed, it it, it matters. It will move the dial. And to have that um, insight to start with, and that is about awareness, that, that yes. our actions matter, yes. that itself, only that... that uh, It's a major it, shift itself, right? Yeah. yeah. The, the response and the testimonials from people is, is great. Then we need to be reminded, we need to, you know, we need help. Just as, we, you know, you can, you can look at health and training. We know mm. we should exercise more. We should have more have a more healthy diet but it's difficult so we need to be reminded we need support we need to be rewarded to do the right things and this is along the same lines and, and that is where to find a, a, a context to 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 get people where they are and where they come back time and time again and the workplace is a very good context because that is where you are on a daily basis. That where you, they're, they're in, the, in the workplace, you have a community and you will support each other. We have something to talk about. We can, we can even compete and compare. So that context is really supporting uh, behavioral change, particularly if you have a sustainability culture to nurture within your organization. That's the perfect mix. So that is one interesting context. Another one is, is a bank platform because you go to your bank app probably two or three times a week to check your balance, to do your payments, whatever. And to have that place as a, as a place for, for insights, and we call that carbon insights, uh, it's great because you get reminded, uh, you get triggered. And if we do that smart, and, and we like to be smart about that, right? We can, we can trigger behavior. Uh, we can mm. reward. And sometimes you drop it, but you can come back just as with, with training and practice. 
So to do that over time, to get people back on that track and gradually work with their emissions, with their with the impact of their habits. Again, once you started, there is you're not you're not turning back. But you you will have sometimes it's difficult, but but it's about doing it step by step, starting easy, and then it becomes more advanced as you go. Yeah, it makes sense, by the way. It, it, look, I think it follows the logic of or the notion of, you know, making change 1% every single day until that behavior becomes something that you stick to. So then you can really embrace it as a new change. The reason why I actually asked that question, because really it's about cultural change, you know, the way how we perceive, you know, our actions in relation to the environment is a cultural change itself. So that's why I think you're operating in a in a very fascinating area, but also very challenging, just because it requires different behaviors. So Indeed. that's why I think it's it's very it's very interesting um, the mission that you have for the company. All right, so let me let me go a little bit more into your experience as a CEO. I mean, you said before, you know, you had this entrepreneurial spirit. You probably always had it. And then you're reconnected with that spirit when you decide to co-found it, you know, uh, did there. Um, what has been your experience as a CEO so far? I'm particularly interested to, you know, besides the typical business challenges, and we just tackle one of those, you know, changing, you know, your, your people's behaviors in a way how you do. But for you, for yourself, for your company, what are the key challenges that you noticed, you know, as a as a CEO and co-founder? Again, besides the traditional because when I ask this question, you know, it's very easy to go to, you know, profit or, you know, mm. reducing cost or growing. That's okay. It's a given. But mm. tell us a little bit more about other challenges you that you see for yourself as CEO, primarily related to people, the culture for the organization. So mm. that would be interesting to 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 have your view about that. Yeah. Yeah. There are, there are many dimensions. I think if we start with the... Uh... With 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 a business perspective, uh, this is a this is a new domain, the domain of net zero. We use we're using the term net zero. When we started in in twenty seventeen, I don't think net zero transformation was even a, a, a you know a, a, mm. a word that you yeah. that you heard about. Agreed. Uh, now it's it's quite natural. It's 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 a transformation, uh, and and well, we're reaching net zero uh, emissions. But yeah. so it's it's a new domain. Um, there is so much to do in this space. And as I said, we started out building this platform. We'll, we'll, with insight, we'll, we'll need to source data for, for transparency so we understand emissions. But not only I mean, understanding is one thing, but then you need to change. So, so to, provide, to provide value for, for, a, for a person, for, for an individual, for, for, a, for a business in, in, you know, in, in understanding and reducing. Um, that is equally important, even more important. And if you build those capabilities, there are so many different ways of, of, of building, building a service, building a business. So, so where do you go? Where do you, where do you focus? Where do you, yeah. where do you spend your efforts? And we have only so much time and only so much effort or well, 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 resources. So one of the, the big challenges have been to say, okay, where do we focus? What is, what is our, what is that the bets we're making? What is the right, horses to play that's one thing and then then we're educating a market there's been nothing like this market before uh it's taking off for sure but it's also a lot of curiosity a lot of people wants to learn and understand and know before they start spending if you like yeah. so so that's also been a, a and, and still is um a, a challenge to you know to to to, to come to to, to, to revenue profitability uh and dealing with people who are serious about and educated and and willing and ready to to invest and spend as customers and obviously as investors as well so so that is that is constantly challenging uh, as for as for culture and that's been the easy the the, the, the easier part if you like i mean we to to become part of a, a team like this to work with with a topic like this has been a, 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 it's, it's a blessing um 
I, I, I started out a company in the, around millennium, uh, around financial engineering. That was really hot. So everyone, every graduate wanted to, to work with you know, trading, trading applications. That was easy to, to recruit. When I, when I left that business, it was not as easy anymore. But, but recruiting teams and getting building alliances, uh, partnerships uh, on in this domain is, is, is quite easy. I mean it's it's something that that is easier than, than you com compared to other. To it's other because domains. the purpose, the meaning, the purpose exactly. of what you do is yeah. so strong so it's easy to attract people to your purpose, right? Yeah yeah absolutely. And I think that is a great demonstration, by the way, great demonstration of what you said. It's a, it's a proof of what many people say, but sometimes they don't even mean it when they say. And to me, you are, again, you are a demonstration of what is imp why the meaning and the purpose of a company is so significant for people to feel attract and engage you know in a company you know and and stick with that because when there is a purpose it's easier to engage employees it's easy to recruit so i think that's a strong message for many other ceos or leaders you know they struggle to attract people and probably the good question is do you have enough oh sorry do you have a strong purpose and meaning for people you know to join the company it sounds like that has been a major positive driver for for the company what are the challenges you see i mean look by the way how many people are working for the company at the moment uh, 20 because, 20 so 20 plus some some helpers and interns and yeah i'd yeah, say yeah. we work 25 on a daily basis in this company yeah, yeah so what is the the goal that you have so imagine five years time you made a strong impact you know achieving fulfilling the purpose what the future looks like for Dister? So, in terms of growth, in terms of expansion, in terms of employees, how do you picture the future of you as a CEO in the company? Yeah, so for us to be on on platforms uh, and introduce um, awareness, uh, education, activation around it, around carbon and carbon insights in on platforms where you have a lot of people, that is that is that is our that is our mission. Uh, so to be on every on every e-commerce platform, on every bank platform, where where you can actually make a difference. I mean, where where you have co commerce, where you have consumption and trade, and and particularly banks being at the heart of consumption, being the very enabler of consumption by financing, by by providing payment facilities, etc. If you can if you can implement um incentives to change for change and, and triggers for change in that system then you will then you will reach through and that that is where you will make a difference so to to, to really to really bring about our our capabilities into those systems onto those platforms and reach millions and millions of people that is what we're trying to do and uh, yeah We've we built a terrific brand. We it's it's a brand that's getting recognized for for true true climate action, for true engagement in this in, on this topic, and to be able to to scale that mm. in one way or another, it's obviously what we're trying to do, and that's our vision. Yeah, makes sense. And by the way, mm. uh, are you guys two right? So two co-founders right now, or four, or more, four co-founders all together. Yeah. So how that's interesting. How is leading? together how has been the power dynamics making decisions so it sounds like you know looking at four co-founders you know one of the potential internal voice that i have oh it's gonna be maybe difficult to get alignment in terms of what we need to do maybe it's completely different so how has been your experience of leading a company with four as a four co-founders being positive Ne well, I would. I don't think it's gonna be negative, of course. But what's the challenge that you found? What is working? What could be a gap? What is something as a learning for other people out there in the startup world? Yeah, well, so that's a good question. Uh, I th th these four co-founders, me included, we've known each other for a very long time. 
Yeah. Uh, I've been working with two of them you know, on a professional basis for now more than 15 years, so 17 years uh, with, with Monica and Andres. And Daniel I've known since, well, it's probably 25, 2020, more than 20 years back. Um, wow. So starting up a company with people that are quite, quite close friends uh, that you know well is obviously... Um, it's, I mean, it's a, how do you say a double-edged sword? It's a, it's a double-edged it sword, yes. Yes, it's it's risky because when you go into business together, you may risk that friendship, right? Yes. yes. So that is that is the risk. But I've done that before. I, I, I started a couple of companies and one of them that became really successful. And we were three old friends starting out together. Uh, again, with that risk and the experience in hindsight is that it's it is easier. The, the upsides they really offset and outweigh well, well outperform. So how do you say uh, the the downside? Because knowing each other well that helps. It mm. it means that there is a there is a security. We we have really really hard conversations and maybe too often even. Uh, with this team because we know each other so well we can be very very straight and blunt to each other because there is such because a because there is a trust as a foundation there is a, I trust. Suppose, there is a right? trust and a foundation of friendship so at the end of the day this is business this is only business at the end of the day we're friends we've been friends for a long time we love we love each other right right and and i think that is a strength it's it's an enormous right. strength then we bring different skill sets different personalities different abilities uh, the four of us so we're we're obviously a little bit the same but 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 also very different yes so so i i get i've got that question many times so so is that really a good friend good good idea to to start a business with your friend yes it's a very good idea uh as long as you're you know you you keep in mind that we're we're not we're not risking the friendship this is a business and, and it's only business right um a few people fail doing that. Uh, for me, yeah. I've only seen upsides. Um, the, the first time was very successful. We are still my best friends. The the the, the two people I, I founded um, um, I was one of the previous companies, Mindwell. Uh, they're my best friends, and and here we are seven years later with this founder team, and we're really tight. Interesting. That's very interesting, and I love what you what you just shared. I mean, you again. That's another interesting demonstration of building a high-performance team. It's really because you the, the friendship has created the, the the very high level of trust, and level the high level of trust has allowed all of you to have very open, transparent, direct uh, conversation, even if they're harder, difficult because the base is trust. So nobody's coming with his own agenda, or you know, for 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 any some sort of different objective, you know, than what you. We all have together. I think that is a great demonstration. So I think if you get, you can, if you can find the level of chemistry and empathy and trust as a team, you can definitely fly. You know, at a different, a different high. So that's I think it's it's amazing. Um, what else people should know about being a CEO these days? I mean, let's let's face what people don't see. You know, you mentioned one thing already. You know, very hard sometimes. You know conflictual but constructive conversation about how leading the business but in an environment it's protected safe etc what else people should know about you know bf co-founder ceo you know i would say besides what we already know about startup you know you know you have to do 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 fail and then you learn from failing what else what else maybe people should know about being a ceo these days yeah well that are not obvious. I mean, there are some obvious things you yeah. need just to, to, to try to find smarter people than yourself and then hire them and then yes. empower them and give them all the decision power they need to 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 flourish. So to let go of control uh, as soon as you can with, with highly talented people is a, is something you just have to do. It's, it's a is complex... that easy, by the way, for you or is it difficult? No, it's not very easy. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. it's, I, 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 I mean, you know... Yeah. To, Control yeah. is is always difficult to let go of, but yes. but it's, it's you have to you have to. Yes. So sometimes it's scary, but um, 
but I mean, for the CEO role is to make sure that there is a clear vision for the company, make sure that there is a well-defined playground, a playground as big as it can possibly be, and let people challenge that. challenge that playground, but then release and unleash every potential you have, you know, towards the in that vision, with that vision and in, in that in that playground, if you like, and make sure that everyone is a hundred percent and empowered, encouraged, um, and and build confidence, build confidence in individuals and, and teams. And mm. but that's I and there is no other way, I guess. <laughs> well look, what you said is by by the way, it's quite profound. I mean, especially I think for founders, getting to the to the point where they become conscious aware it's time to let things go and it's not anymore my baby. It's something more, it's something bigger, something that needs to be bigger. So I need to let things go. And, you know, look, that, just that realization, it's something not so, you know, I wouldn't take it for granted in other words, because, you know, we have seen many other founders that have been so protective about their own thing because that's their own thing, right? It's their own baby, and I can't let it go, etc. And that's, I mean, a little bit by experience, I would say, but it's been always one of the major roadblock for founders to grow is their ability to, you know, to to let others take a little bit more control, authority, leadership about, you know, bringing the organization forward. So, so it, it makes absolutely sense. And how? So, I'm curious. I mean, you said all all great things. Is now looking back to the future. You know, you have a you design in your mind. You know, a great future for the organization. You said you know, touching million people in a way or another. What's gonna? What do you think is gonna change for you as a guys? You know, were four co-founders in the future. I mean, did you already have that sort? Maybe it's one of the hard conversation to see. How are you going to lead the organization in the future? Or that is something that you will figure out later as soon as you get to the point where it's time to have that conversation? I guess. I mean, if, you, if you're just a little bit sane about it, that to, to run a, a company of, well, I, I, I've run organizations of a few hundred people. Mm. Um, and to do that uh, or run a, a, a group or, or organization with, a, you know, few thousand people a global one is a different different thing so yeah. i think you need to recognize that there are there are capabilities and that that are probably better suited than than myself to 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 run such an organization so and so to be ready to step back or uh step aside uh when the time is right is as that's that's important i'm i am the I'm one of the co-founders. Uh, I will be. I'm very proud of what we've done so far. To be to continue to be proud, it needs to grow, and it's not necessarily me and and my my current team that will, you know, take it through the the whole journey. Um, and I will be equally proud when 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 someone else will will take this platform, you know, to to the to the higher heights, if you like. Yeah. So, but it, but it's obviously very difficult to say because you really. We we love to do this. We I I enjoy every day in uh, yeah. work. Um, it's a difficult question, obviously. Difficult question, and honestly, I would say these are wise words used by a serial entrepreneur. At least the mindset that you have, you know, ready to let things go. Um, great. So let me ask you the final question, then I'll let you go. Because as a as a as a founder, definitely you are busy, and I know you you know you've been incredibly busy today. So only the last three questions, quick question for a quick answer. I'm curious, what is one major learning across all of your career? Not only this, sir, you know, in general, if there is one le learning that you would like to share about your career, your leadership, what do you think that learning is going to be? Well, it's obviously combined uh, twofold. It's it's one, uh, I would I would have taken more risk I would have taken more. Uh, I would have been more bold. Uh, I think I've been bolder and bolder, and, and more of a risk taker the older I got. Um, so, so looking back, 
by, by taking more risk, we would have sometimes failed faster and one time, and we would be more successful with, uh, mm. with the things we succeeded in. So be bold, take, take a lot of risk, uh, as much risk as you can, and even beyond. Um, so that, that's one thing. On the other hand, patience uh, is something you get, by, I guess, by, by age and by, by seeing things. It's a long race. Uh, yes. quite, quite often you don't see the solution in front of you. And, and, you, and that's where you keep a cool head and the landscape will change and then you hit then you, then you will see how, how how things evolve and what well, what what go, what goes around comes around so so it's a combination of, of being faster taking more risk but at the same time sometimes you just need to wait out things a little bit uh, before you move yeah that's excellent learning and i get that is also one of you know do you have, by the way, any regrets? Or maybe what you share is also a regret. It's a learning, but also a regret. It sounds like it is, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Great point. Okay, great. Final question. What's your approach, attitude to learning? I mean, you said before, you're very curious. So I have a feeling that learning for you has been always important. At least that's my understanding from the conversation we had. What is your way to learn? Is it more experienced? Experiential is through reading. Is what, what's your approach to learning? And if it's reading, is there any book that well you mentioned before? Maybe is that <laughs> that made a huge impact about you, your career, your future? Yeah, I I, I do read a lot, um, uh, and meeting, getting to know people is is probably for me even more more the the learning by by. By asking people, by 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 listening to people's stories, by by watching people, by having role models, and and copy with pride, I guess uh, I, I meet a lot of smart people. I listen to them and see what I can do that they have done. But but reading and and if you have ask about books, uh, I mean on this topic again, Klein, uh, this changes everything. Is uh, as a as a, as a as a scientific testimony, if you like, or or a material for for understanding the complexity of this topic is is a great great learning. Uh, but but there there's been other other books. Um, one of the first books that really influenced me was was Tom Wolf. Uh, what's the name of that book? Is it was also a movie. A movie, your cheese. That one. Oh no, the right no, stuff. Sorry. The right, the right stuff. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> But that because that got me into to the to to to, to air to the air okay. to the um, to the air force and then that, that part of my career. But for me, I've I've changed paths uh, radically three times, and when you've done that once, you want to do it again. So hmm. I probably run into something even more exciting and even more thrilling than than what I'm doing now, and then maybe we we. Uh, we take a new uh, sort of a new avenue, but but for, for now, this this sustainability net zero, I cannot think of anything more important and more relevant for for myself. Agreed. Well, wonderful. That's wonderful way of ending this conversation. So, uh, Niklas, where people should go if they want to get in touch with you, understand more about your company. Uh, they can check in our website. It's uh, distro.com. Um, I'm obviously on LinkedIn, so please connect. Uh, I'm always curious and open to to more conversations. So love to be contacted and connected. Wonderful. Well, Nicholas, thank you so much for being with me today and uh, be a guest of our show. I enjoyed the conversation because you brought something very important and close to me, which is climate change, but as well all conversation about purpose so thank you again thank you Andrea. it was a pleasure meeting you this afternoon